Irish Media Network. We entertain. I'm Mark Vian. You're very welcome to the Decades of Dance Music Quiz, where we test the contestants' knowledge of music history from the last 10 decades or 100 years. No one said it was going to be easy. And you're tuned to the Irish Media Network via YouTube and Facebook Live. Good evening, people. It's day 43 of my own personal lockdown. The sun is back, and we're into the second last qualifier of the DOD Music Quiz. Tonight, it's a DJ battle of Ireland, North and South. We have some of the best selectors in the country. Will they be able to turn water into wine and take home the bacon? Also, yeah. <laughs> don't, forget, don't forget, if you're watching, make sure you fire in your answers. And as we, go along, as we go along, also, if you have any questions for our team tonight, like when was the last time they broke the law or licensed listen to shit music, you, or, or just make up your own answer, questions if you want. Just fire them in, and we'll try and get to them as soon as possible. Big up to Andy Bell, the winner from the last round, and shout out to all the Korean crew I've been watching so far. Who would have thought we would have made it that far? Not me. Well, we've got a biggie for tonight. As I said, it's the battle of the Irish DJ dad dons on decades of dance tonight. All the fucking Ds. It, it makes sense. I, I'm going to start with a young man, or is he an elf fella in disguise? First up is a man who, as a child, had a, ma had a major fear of shopping in Michael Guinies with his mother. Michael Guinies is the low budget Irish department store, for those wondering. He did a full DJ tour of Mexico with his partner in crime, Martin Roach, and spent more time in the toilet than he did anywhere near the dance floor of the DJ booth. <laughs> you see, you have, to, you, standard, you have to stay away from the street food tacos, my man. They'll run through you like a freight train. He's, he's one half of the amazing Get Down Edits, Waterford's finest disco evangelists who've been rocking parties the world over, defected, I beat the London Mexican toilets and more. They make some of the best disco and house music, period, and they are proper good people to boot. Represent Waterford, it's Triple D himself, Darren Das Dalton, aka the party animal, up to Desi. Welcome to the show, Thanks, Martin. Martin, Martin your, you. other, your other DJ half asked me to call you party animal. What's that all about? Oh, that's because that's his name. So he tries to turn everything back on me. Because uh, Party Marty is that's 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 his name. Yeah. So he just he's trying to put it all back on me. Yeah. Okay, I believe that. I'm the sensible one. I'm the the one I, to play. I the guide Martin some as best I can, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I always saw you as a sensible one, but I'm kind of a bit shocked now. I'm not sure what to believe anymore, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. So okay, what's the worst food you've eaten in the last three weeks? Bonus points if you name the person who made it for you. In the last three weeks, um, four weeks as well. Yeah, well, I suppose I've just been just been here the last few weeks, so Paul has been making all the food, so it's definitely something Paul has made anyway. And it's all good, everything she makes. So I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Wise mom. I have to right, make sure there's something there for me tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a, there's only food. There's no bad food or horrible <laughs> no, food. No, no, good it's man. All good good, good man. Well, 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 you're very welcome to the show. Our next guest. Our next guest, next up, is Belfast answer to SpongeBob SquarePants meets Obi Wan Kenobi. He's the he's the, father, he's the father of two. His eldest son Luke once destroyed a vintage Mercedes at the tender age of five without even driving it. He's been yeah, the leading yeah. figure of the Belfast club scene for the last twenty years and maybe more. I met him at the Rebel Music Academy, and we've been getting into trouble ever since. He now runs Extended Play Records and is putting out music from a thriving dance music scene in Ireland. There's, there's so much music to talk about, we just possibly couldn't talk about it. To, to continue the Star Wars theme, he had a cat called Jabba, a fat ginger cat that didn't move much, but was, was an absolute unit. The Paul spall, the spall, the spall skulls of cats. Sadly, Jabba's not with us anymore and has been replaced by Lightsaber or Saber, the lurcher dog who runs like a horse. That, that, yeah. That's a turnaround for the books, butter, isn't it? Big question, yeah. you're all wondering. Did he ask his wife to change her name to Princess Leia? I'm sure he tried to. <laughs> and that might have been a no. He hates green vegetables. No one has ever seen him eat any. It's Timmy Stewart. How are you, Timmy? I'm good. I'm good, mate. I'm good in lockdown. I'm getting a tan in lockdown. That's the only good bit of this. And also my wife's cooking, I've got to say. so And filing uh, all the hoarding of my entire life. So they're the plus <laughs> points of being locked at home with two kids, a dog and wife. So we're all trying not to kill each other, but we're getting getting on okay at the minute. Job done. So, it's, so is Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland, immune to Northern Rona? Ireland. Is it what? Is, is it immune to the Rona, the Corona? No, no. There's definitely cases of it here. Maybe not as many as, <laughs> as other places in the world, because people here are completely hardened to everything. Um, <laughs> a bit crazy, as you, as you know yourself, from meeting a few over the years. Um, oh, yeah. so 
Yeah, maybe it's it's going to take a lot to take the Nordies down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's been so many that we've met. That I, don't, I didn't, I don't, I, you know, there's nothing that could probably take those boys down. I have a big question for you, though. Mm -hmm. um, could you build a house with all the bog roll you have stockpiled? Well, I wasn't one of those stockpilers, so we're, we're just using it like a normal person. Um, I'm sure there's some people who could build igloos with theirs, yeah. <laughs> Shocking behavior, might I add. <laughs> You're getting the sunshine down there anyway. Look, you're looking oh, good there, yeah, man. man. It's tro it is literally tropical every day. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, man. Right. So last is a man who was the daddy of house music in Ireland. He's also a daddy in real life. He began, he began life as Plankton in Dublin and developed into the killer whale of house music we know him as today. He started club. He started proper clubbing with his brother Shane, who is a master tomato grower. I wonder if Timmy Stewart would ever eat a tomato. Probably not. Anyway. <laughs> I love tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Greg and Shane started house music in Ireland, as we know it today. End of story. You named the big guns. Dave worked with them. He had a number one with The Cure and the Cause, still one of the greatest dance tracks of all times, and we haven't even started on Sir Henry's, the venue of their legendary club sweat. His wife was a serious chef. In fact, the whole family are serious chefs. I wonder when no one is looking, are they secretly scoffing Pop-Tarts and bags of onion rings from their local chipper? I very much doubt it. It's the godfather of House Cork's finest, Greg Dowling of Fish Go Deep. Greg, how are you, brother? I'm very good. Very, very good. Good yeah. to hear it. So, come on, come on, man. You... You have a weakness for shit food, right? You do, don't don't you? <laughs> Anything even approaching a bad meal. In about six weeks. <laughs> there has to be something like a spice bag or the likes that, you know, <laughs> that you're, you've had or some kind of guilty pleasure you're having behind secret, closed doors secretly. No, it's like a test kitchen here in, in our downstairs. It, it certainly is. It certainly is. It's fantastic. <laughs> okay, so what's the funniest thing you've heard in the last two weeks? Bonus points for like simply a simply bizarre story. Oh. Really? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've heard too many funny things. There's lots of those stupid things on the, on WhatsApp, which I can't remember now, but I haven't heard that too many funny things, really. A, a, a large man with a large phallus. <laughs> the well and died. Did he had that one where the guy was dealing communion. Did you see that one? It was brilliant. <laughs> That's a good one. So what, what's the first thing you're going to do when the lockdown's broken? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's the correct answer. Yeah, I just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, well, you're very welcome to the show, man. It's great to have. We have Cork, we have Belfast, and we have Waterford in the house tonight. Um, on my on my left, on my right, on my left, on my right, on my right is Owen Long, the quiz wizard from Irish Media Network. He's going to do a quick run through oh of how the show yes. runs. Owen. Hey, Owen. Are you going to tell them how the show <laughs> <Yeah>. runs? <laughs> Excuse me, yeah. So for everybody watching at home who hasn't played along yet, the three contestants are going to get asked 10 questions by Arvine. I'm going to be getting their answers received in here via WhatsApp. So Arvine will call out a question. The guys will text their answer into me. You can play along at home, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. You can put your answers in, in the comments. Arvine will be keeping an eye on them, and we'll call out a public winner at the end. So pretty straightforward. Three, question, three contestants, 10 questions. We'll call out those answers and the winner at the very end. So best of luck, gents. Awesome. So I just want to do a few shout outs to the people tuning in. Shane, how are you doing, brother? Is that uh, he's been calling? Well, he's one of the few people who's been calling me Arvid19. We've got Barry Crumley. <laughs> Barry Crumley, let's go, lads. And we've got Andy J. Hey folks. We've also got HJ, Irish Spring, Kay's in the house. So we've got quite a few people tuning in. I need to find the questions, and we will start with the first one. Um, Timmy, are you ready? I'm ready, bro. Uh, Greg, are you ready? I'm ready. Daz, party animal Daz, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's down for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so episode 15, Belfast v, v Waterford v Cork. Question one, legendary label, Strictly Rhythm, records started in which year the closest to the year wins legendary label strictly rhythm started in which year closest to the year wins the points so timmy's in with his answer there quickly it's a toughie that one strictly rhythm so many classic records 
So Greg is the one with the correct answer in this <gasps> round. Yuck. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I, have, I have one to 100 on Strictly Rhythm over there. Like, uh, cert? <laughs> no. I do. I do. Nice. I've no doubt about that one. Shout out to Stephen Richards. He's wishing you all the best of luck tonight, lads. So our question number two. Choice, a collection of classics, was a rare dance co co compilation released by Azuli Records. Name one DJ who was lucky enough to be asked to do one. Choice, a collection of classics, was a rare compilation released by Azuli Records. Name one DJ who was lucky enough to be asked to do one. Literally, the answer is right in front of your eyes. Sorry. Right in front of your face. Yes. We got Darren and Timmy are correct. So right there. I just predictive text and it was. <laughs> oh, you have? Did you have predictive test, text in Waterford? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's actually kind of coming out all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> so we got all the answers in there, Arvin. Lovely. Okay, awesome, man. So, um, next question: Donna Summer, Donna Summer's "I Feel Love" was produced by which well-known producer DJ? Donna Summer's. I feel love is produced by which well-known producer at DJ. I don't think any of these boys are going to struggle with that one. I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> An iconic man who had a hand in Italia disco. Come on, Timmy Stewart says Lebo, Lebo mode, Lebo mode. Ring any bells there, Timmy, Lebo mode. Oh, yes. Absolute lunatic. Absolute, in absolute there. unit. Shane, you got yep. the... Shane has tuned in. He's got the right answer. Question three. I think you got the wrong answer for question two, brother. Um, we've also got Michelle Kylie saying, "Come on, come on, Greg, come on." All right. Question. Hold on, hold on. We're still waiting on Darren and Greg to get in their answers. That's that's, that's so long, yeah. Greg, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the spelling is yeah, 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 yeah. Spelling. Oh, yeah. Spelling. <laughs> you got all the answers in there. Arv. Spelling and predictive text that was just arrived in Waterford. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm going to get killed now by the Waterford Mafia. Yeah, yeah. So, you get um, thrown in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Drowned. All right, question number four. Name a member of Influential Dance Act Masters at Work. Name a member of Influential Dance Act Masters at Work. Protect, predict, and everybody gets this now. I mean, if you don't get this one, give it all, the, uh, all yeah. the answers are in, Irv. All the answers are in. Awesome. We've got a few people firing. Stephen Richards firing in the right answers. Shane, you got that third question right, mate. Um, question number five The Garden Festival in Croatia started in which year? Closest to the year wins. The Garden Festival in Croatia started in which year? Closest to the year wins. Oh, Garden Festival in Croatia. Wonder if any of these guys played there, I don't know. Daz. Daz has probably played there. No, played there, not at the Garden Festival though. Um, Electric Elephant was the first one I was over at. Uh, Electric Elephant. Timmy with the red face, have you played uh, the man with the red face, Timmy Stewart? Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to get onto one of those boats. Great. Garden Festival Croatia. It's definitely like definitely Darren, wasn't wasn't the seventies. Darren takes home the points in that round. Darren takes home the bacon. I was just a guess. <laughs> Party animal at it again. <laughs> Did not trust this man. <laughs> okay, question number six. Superstar DJ Martin Garrix is a native of which country? Germany, Austria, or Holland? Superstar DJ Martin Garrix is a native of which country? Germany, Austria, or Holland? Greg in there with the right answer, lightning quick. Martin Garrix. I love a bit of trance. <laughs> <laughs> give, give trance a chance. <laughs> we got all the answers in there, Arvin. All in there, yeah, sweet. Okay. Uh, question number seven. 
His very first DJ Awards, dubbed the Oscars of Electronic Music, was held in 1998. Can you name who took home the award for best house slash garage DJ? Was it A, Frankie Knuckles, B, Eric Murillo, or C, Roger Sanchez? Very first DJ Awards dubbed the Oscars of Electronic Music, held in 1998. Can you name who took home the award for best house slash garage DJ? A, Frankie Knuckles, B, Eric Murillo, C, Roger Sanchez. Okay, so all the answers in there. <laughs> we're in, yeah, we're in, we're in, we're in. We're all in. Dabbing in the dark. Pure <laughs> guess like. It's probably the real <laughs> Timmy's face is red, but I think, Daz, your face is red there, but I think it's from a red light, actually, yeah, as opposed to Timmy's. From a, from a lamp up there. <laughs> Timmy got, Timmy, what were you doing in the sun, in the sun today? Were you? Uh, eating nice food, chilling out, listening to music. And not realizing that I've been there a bit too long. <laughs> it's been a little bit here today. I, I am literally the man with the red face. You are. <laughs> that, that was the next question. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at it. <laughs> it is the man. Um, right. So let's have a look where we are now. We've got, we've only got three more questions to go. So, um, yeah. question number eight Gloria Gaynor's 1975 LP, Never Can Say Goodbye was credited as the first continuous mega mix ever committed to wax. Who was it created by? So credited as the first continuous mix, mega mix ever committed to wax. Whom was it created by? Gloria Gaynor's 1975 LP, Never Can Say Goodbye, was credited as the first continuous mega mix ever committed to wax. Who or whom was it created by? Greg and Darren both with the correct answer. Go on, Timmy. Say say it's Lauren Garnier. <laughs> <laughs> you should do you should do a bootleg of, of that track, the the the, the Northern Iron Man with the red face. Oh, I know the answer to this, I just can't think who it is now. Oh man. Ah! We'll come back to you next week when you're in the back garden. <laughs> Getting the sun in your face again. Yeah, your face will be properly red. <laughs> uh, okay. Got a few people firing in answers there. Shane, Dave Hennessy, Steve Richards, Stephen Richards, HJ. Dun, 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 dun. So, Jimmy, let's have you. I uh, can't remember a second name. Yeah, I'll give it to you. I Go on, will you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on first name terms with him anyway. Yeah, that's, <laughs> he's in my phone. As... <laughs> yeah, that's what happened, Darn. That's uh, all the answers in, Irene. Good to go. Hold on. I'm just taking a quick drink there. I don't know if you guys want to grab a quick drink while we're. I've been sipping on the hard stuff tonight. Cheers. Uh, oh. Animal heat. Uh... <laughs> oh, look at that party animal. What was that party animal? <laughs> It is Animo Hito in a tin. Animo in a tin. He's like <laughs> Jesus, legend. Like a, like a labor leader politician, man. They're, they're doing that on the tubes over here, drinking that stuff, man. Yeah, living up to the name. Go through a mask. How much? How much have you guys been drinking since the lockdown, though? In all fairness, Craig. Too much. Um, a bit, at the first couple of weeks, we probably we were having too much. I was pushing mm. out the bottle bin and I was going, this is way too much drink. And then, then we decided to just cut it down and you know stop on Sunday and not drink again until Friday. So <laughs> That's hard, right, man. That's, That's hard. hard. You know, on a nice yeah. sunny evening, nice bottle of wine would be nice. Exactly. Yeah. Far too easy, isn't it? It says it all over your face, Timmy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you could easily get, you know, when you don't have to get up in the morning and all that. Like it's kind of Exactly. Exactly. Oh, it's the weather. I'm just going to blame the weather. So it goes so nicely with a glass of anything. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Right, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm off on a mission here. I'm off on a mission here. So um, question number nine, iconic 1980s Chicago nightclub, The Music Box, was set up and owned by what famous house legend? Iconic 1980s Chicago nightclub, The Music Box, was set up and owned by what famous Chicago house legend. Oh, 
was it the other one? Um, so he was also the resident DJ. Yeah, we got all correct it's answers bad. there from everybody. Well, yeah, we got Mar Martin Party Boy Roach is just tuned in there with the right answer. <laughs> up to Desi, up to Desi. What's the up to Desi thing all about, Daz? Because I'm like, I'm still not figuring oh, it out. Oh, that's the Daisha, up to Daisha. Oh, up to Daisha. Yeah, yeah. All <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who's Daisha? Okay. That's what I walk was the Daisha County. Yeah, that's, uh, oh, all yeah. right. Up to Daisha. Anast Anastasia. <laughs> yeah. Set up by the Russian oligarchs. Of Waterford, <laughs> Daz and Martin. All right, final question. All the answers are in there, Owen. Yeah, yeah, you are indeed, mate. Okay, final question. Who has won more Grammys, Daft Punk or Skrillex? Who has won more Grammys, Daft Punk or Skrillex? Hmm. Tough on that one. Oh, Greg. You Okay, Jesus. Right. Jesus. This is going to be a tough one. <laughs> okay, okay. so I'm going to recap over the questions, have a little stab of it because I don't have the answer. So legendary label, Strictly Rhythm Records, start in which year? Closest wins. I'm going to say it was mid-90s, 1996. Will you my stab with that one on? So correct answer is 1989. It's Gladys Pizarro and Mark Finkelstein. So they've had some of the biggest mm -hmm. names on the label and they got bought by BMG in 2005 and they're still creating tracks today. So Greg was the only one with the correct answer here. Bang on oh, one. Yeah. Right, I thought 90, 1991. I went for 91. Yeah. yeah, I knew it was the least, but I just wasn't sure the exact year. Yeah. All right. Unlucky for you two lads. You had, didn't have a clue on that one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's no point. way. Yes. Tricky question, actually. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Choice, a collection of classics, was a rare dance compilation released by Azuli Records. Name one DJ who was lucky enough to do one. My favorite one is the Frankie Knuckles one. Mm, it's killer. Mm. Yeah. So again, you could have picked Frankie Knuckles, Danny Tenegli, Francois K, Louis Vega, Tony Humphreys, or John Digweed. Now, I just want to correct one thing, Greg. You put in here Dave Lee. So I presume you're talking about Joey Negro. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he didn't do a choice collection of classics to the best of my knowledge. I thought he so did. The, that. Yeah, so that's if you had got that one right, you would have put yourself in the lead. But yeah, it's uh, just a small little collection of people for that one. Damn. Danny Senegli, I was the first fella popped into my head, yeah. Well, yeah, if you see the Frankie Frankie Knuckles one is right there on the wall, I was presuming a couple of people might say. <laughs> there oh, from yeah. Hence the, hence the clue. It's right yeah. in front of your faces. Yeah. <laughs> we got, we got um, a couple of people got the right answer to that one on there. Yeah, so shouts to you. Also, we've got Elephant Knight in the house. Big shout outs to Arvid and Arvid19 and the crew. How are you doing out there? Um, right, next question is, Donna Summer, I Feel Love was produced by which well-known DJ uh, producer? And that is Giorgio Moroder. Yeah, exactly. So it's a pretty obvious one. The dub the Godfather, the father of disco, helped create Italian disco, and his work with synths was pretty influential in a number of genres in music. So yeah, everybody got the answer for this one. Go on, Giorgio. Go on, Giorgio. You good thing. Um, <laughs> name a member. <laughs> name a member of Dance Axe Master Work. You can have uh, Lou Vega or Kenny Dope. Yeah, um, you would have been cast with shame if you didn't get the right answer to this one. So everybody got the right one here. <laughs> I'm moving swiftly on. The Garden Festival of Croatia started in which year? Closest of the year wins. I think that was 2006. Yeah, so you're okay. right at 2006. Wow. Darren got the money right there. So it was set up by Nick and Charlotte Colgan and Eddie and Gail O'Callaghan. And it's still one of the best mid-tempo festivals you can go to in the world. So Very good. Proper Irish names going on there too, lads. Um, Right, superstar DJ Martin Garrix is a native of which country? I mean, I, when I think of Garrix, I just think of. Um, uh, is he a trans meister? Is he? He's a big trans, big tra he's tra young trans. Lad, he's very young, isn't he? Yeah, I kind of think. I think of like, um, you know, ast Asterix. I think of Asterix the comics when I think of him. So I'm going to go on, on the goal. So I'm going to go for Germany on that one. I went Germany as well. Yeah, just a guess though. Yeah. Yeah, well, the correct answer is Holland. So DJ of the Year for three consecutive years in 2016, 17, and 18. I love them oh. Dutch trends. <laughs> 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 I love on their careers all the time. I love watching where they're going and what they're doing. <laughs> I wonder what, <laughs> what do you reckon they're doing right now, though, Greg? That's a big, big oh, well, question. They're probably, in the house. Money, like, you know? and they're probably going back home. A lot of them live with their mum and dad, you know. 
I'm sure he <laughs> they do. Lucky bastard. Garrix probably does. He's about 16. He's yeah. got it. He's got I a couple of tens of millions in his bank account. I don't think he's got them with his man there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm nearly sure Martin Garrix lives with his parents in a small town outside Amsterdam. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. I would if I was him too, in fairness, in all fairness. <laughs> yeah. um, his mother's an amazing cook. <laughs> Leia. His, his mother, Leia, is an amazing cook. Oh, I can't remember. All right, well, next question was, the very first DJ Awards dubbed the Oscars of Electronic Music was held in 1998. Can you name who took home the award for Best House and Garage DJ? Was it A, Frankie Knuckles, B, Eric Murillo, C, Roger Sanchez? So if it's 1998, I'm going to go for... Eric Murillo, because that was kind of his peak, a beat the period, and I'm assuming that DJ Magazine would have been wrapped around all that, as opposed to the legendary Frankie Knuckles and all that. Yeah, well, you would be correct. So Eric Murillo was pretty much leading light at that time. He did his Essential Mix in 96. Uh, Subliminal Sessions had a number of releases leading up to that year. So he won a three times winner, 96, 2001, and 2003, as Best House and Garage DJ. Bang on the money, bang on the money. Um, right, next question. Glory Gainers, 1975, LP Never Can Say Goodbye. is credited as the first continuous mega mix ever created. Who was the person behind that? Um, whom or who? Um, this is something I was talking about with Joe Wallace, who was our previous guest. I think it was Tom Moulton. Yeah, that's what yeah. yeah, so everybody got the right answer here. Tom Malton is the creator of the remix and the extended mix and the breakdown. So he's one of the most influential people up there with kind of Larry Levan, Walter Gibbons, Ron Hardy, and DJ Herc. Uh, so yeah, a Tom Malton mix is one of those kind of golden stamp of approvals on a song. Awesome, yeah, brother. Yeah. Um, Thanks for the 12-inch phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Cheers, matey. Cheers. Here, apparently Tiesto was buy is busy buying an island, a COVID free island. Have you heard about this one? <laughs> <laughs> we can all yeah. go there with You can well afford it. I could well afford it, man. Should have went trans, lads. See the mistakes we made. <laughs> uh shouts to Shane for that one. Also shouts to Ramen um for tuning in. Ken Krangle. On Daz. Is Ken Krangle one of your crew from the Waterford crew? Yes, yes indeed. All right, Ken. Well, <laughs> what is it? Up to up to Dashi. Up to Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Dacia. That's the Dacia. The Dacia or the Dacia County. The Dacia. Okay. <laughs> no relation to Kim or Chloe or any of them. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere, man. They're everywhere, you know. Yeah, um, I'm Waterford anyway, I don't think. <laughs> the next question. Iconic. Uh, 1980 Chicago nightclub, the Music Boxes, was set up and owned by which famous legendary house DJ? And he's also the resident there. I think this is Ron Hardy because of so many, been so many amazing edits of his over the last 10 years that have surfaced on bootleg wow. vinyl. Yeah, so the correct answer is Ron Hardy. So if there's a few people who can rival Rat Frankie Knuckles in terms of stature, it's Ron Hardy making reel-to-reel -reel mixes back in 1974 and is famous for his 72-hour mixes and his party lifestyle. So unfortunately, he got hooked on a few uh, things that he shouldn't have got hooked on and didn't get to realize what he should have been able to do. 72-hour DJ sets. Yeah. 72 hour DJ sets, yeah. So Probably. it's one of the things that Danny Tenegli always uh, referenced. So I've seen Danny Tenegli do 23 hour sets at his residencies over in New York and Be Yourself Party. So he used to always mm. talk about Ron Hardy being able to do it. But I think the shit that Ron Hardy was on, you'd be yeah. able to do it for 72 hours, to be fair. Because yeah. mm. I, I was going to ask how many shits you thought he did in 72 hours. <laughs> no. He had a pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, man. Yeah. I'm sure Daz has done a few 72 hour sessions in his time down there, party boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the final question is who won more Grammys, Daft Punk or Skrillex? Um, you know what? I've, I'm going to take a stab at this. I mean, I, I'm going to say Skrillex because I just think he, he's been more, you know, commercial in the last 10 years or so, you know? Yeah, and he's also produced a couple of hits that you mightn't have known his name too. So he's won eight Grammys and Daft Punk have won six. So right. Skrillex has been nominated for 13 and Daft Punk have been nominated to 12. So everybody got Daft Punk here for this one, which was the incorrect answer. And wow. which amazingly brings us to a three-way tiebreaker, just like our last wide episode. So everybody's got six out of 10. And what we're going to do now is there's a tiebreaker question like our last episode. It's the first person with the answer text into me 
is going to move on to the quarterfinals and the <laughs> knockout tournament. So well, fingers that's... at the ready, gentlemen. <laughs> okay. I like actually keeping in team with one of the answers. Oh, so. I like to move. It was a hit dance act. Real. It was created by hit dance act Real to Real. Can you name the famous DJ behind Real to Real? Ooh. They're all typing. Okay, so Darren, you're Darren just got in there. Ahead of uh, did he win? <laughs> yeah, he said Eric Maroika. I know. <laughs> I think I knew. I think I, I knew what you meant. Yeah. No, did you're actually correct. Predictions next again caught me. So yeah. Did he come I, in had, I made the right word. Did he actually say Eric Murillo in in the answer? He said Eric Maroika, and then uh, Timmy got Eric Murillo in straight away, and then he corrected with Eric Murillo. But I think we'd have to be some Stasi to not give it to Daz after him getting it in there just because of predictive tests. Remember, yeah. predictive tests is only for Waterford, Arvin. <laughs> One question, gents. Did I get a point for Derek Carter's choice comp? You did, yes. Right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's definitely that one of the worst. Good, yeah. yeah, yeah, I have the whole entire collection. I'm happy to let the Waterford man take it then. For once, Ulster says yes. Yes, sir. Phenomenal as well. Up the dishes. Up the dishes. Wash the dishes. I'll do the dishes. Yeah, I'll be doing the dishes. So, um, Greg, thanks for coming in tonight. So, what's your plan for the next couple of days? Are, are you in the studio rocking out the tunes? What's going on? Um, I'm. I, we're kind of, I'm kind of working on sounds and things, just a bit of sound design, just for just for the synths and just getting to know some equipment that has been sitting there and I haven't really understood some of it. And I've got a I've got a kind of a modular setup over there which I'm getting my head around. So I'm yeah. using that the time at the moment to do that. And so we're working on bits and pieces as well, and uh, playing the guitar a bit. Could you do us a little thirty second song on the guitar? No, absolutely. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Got you. Well, lots of love to you and the family, man, and send our love to, to the Cork Massive, Shane, and his amazing tomatoes. We miss them a lot. Um, <laughs> Timmy Stewart, you dark sit lord, you. What is going on in, up north? Have you been banging out tunes in the studio? or? Well, yes, I'm, I'm sort of, I've got a studio in my house, so I'm enjoying that. That's a real perk of being locked up, isn't it? it yeah, that really can get creative, and it is, it is definitely helping with those moments where everything's just getting a bit... So, yeah, making loads of music and doing loads of edits and doing loads of stuff like that and trying not to kill my kids and trying to stop this dog eating everything in my house. So, <laughs> I can see, I've got to have my hands full and my face is going to get even redder. Oh, no, I'm, I'm... I feel like we're losing out on that red face over the next few rounds of the competition because it's such a, it's you know, it's iconic. <laughs> this thing. Just stick me on the camera at the side there and I can cheer mm -hmm. people on. I might, I might have to, brother. I might have to. All right, listen, man, thanks a million for getting on board Thank tonight. You. Lots of love to the family. And Daz, the winner of tonight, man. Decades of dance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up to Daisha, party animal himself, lads. Thanks for, uh, for tuning in. Thanks for being part of it. Shout outs Thanks to all me. the people for firing in their questions and answers. And uh, we will be back on Wednesday with, with a proper poptastic crew. Andrea Horn from Tropical Popical. We've got James O'Neill, aka James Wolf, and also Vogue Wilson. It's going to be poptastic, that one. Totally different from the boys tonight. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Good night. Okay. Peace. Thanks very much. Irish Media Network. We entertain.